Welcome to a new video and a new insight on how to deploy AI in the construction industry. In this video, we're going to be discussing Lava Large Language Model and its visual capabilities where it understands the images, describe them and how it could be deployed to understand and decipher characters in text. We're going to be exploring in this video the architecture of the model and how we could build a chatbot that uses the capabilities of that model. We're going to be drilling deeper into the steps of building the whole system. So without further ado, let's get started. The architecture of the system that we're going to be explaining in this video relies on the following. We're going to be importing a number of items. We're going to be importing images. We're going to be importing Python libraries. And we're going to be importing Lava large language model and visual assistant. The Python libraries are going to enable the conversion of the images into Torch tensors. The Python libraries alongside the imported Lava model are going to enable us to create a prompting function which converts the prompt that we're going to give the model into a format that is understood by the model. And then we can embed the sub functions into a main function or an overarching function. And the direct application of the system is that we're going to give the system an image. The image is going to be converted into torch tensors using the overarching function. We're going to provide a query or a prompt to describe that image. That prompt is going to be converted using the prompting function inside of the overarching function. And then the end result is going to be an answer, which is this is a house under construction. So let's understand the development environment where this code is developed. The first thing is the integrated development environment or the IDE of choice is VS Code. I love work on VS Code. The Python version installed on my machine is 3.11.5. Uh, Unfortunately, Lava Torch is only available through Linux and the systems that are Unix based. Um, so like Mac OS, um, I think it might work on Windows subsystem for Linux, but you have to work in an environment where there's no graphical user interface. Jump into the main packages required. The first one is Glob, which deals with file names, file paths, and importing uh, lots of files in arrays. Requests that is related to files that you're gonna be referring to them through the HTTPS protocol. Transformers is quite important for natural language processing in general and large language models in specific. Torch library with the CUDA enabled. Again, that is going to be quite related to the NVIDIA graphics card and how to deal with um, large language models and convert data into Torch tensors or PyTorch tensors that are understood by the large language models. PIL that's quite vital to our exercise today because that library deals with images and understanding the pixels, how to convert the images, resolution and aspect ratios. Accelerate, it allows expediting dealing with large language models and the processing in general and making the best use of the computer's specifications. Bits and bytes, that allows the end user to put in the weights and biases of different large language models. And last but not the least is our hero for the day. The Lava Torch, which allows importing the model itself, chatting with it, understanding images, and then describing them. Uh, the recommended specifications in order to undertake this exercise uh, is basically a desktop computer. Laptops, they are going to be pretty slow unless you're using Linux. Um, so the first one is, yeah, you need at least Intel Core i7 and you need a GPU of NVIDIA RTX 3080 or if you have access to the Tesla Tesla, Tesla um, graphic processing units. The first step as always is to import the necessary packages. So we imported all of them packages that we have spoken about previously and we are importing some of the modules within the Lava package to understand the images, have key stopping criteria and processing the images to canonize them and getting the model from the Hugging Face website, which we're going to show in a little bit. Also, we are trying to disable Torch where there is some sort of conflicts. Mm -hmm. 
Having imported the necessary packages, it's now time to import the model, the images and the tokenizer. So the first piece of that step is importing the actual model as you can see here. The model of choice is Lava version 1.5, the 13 billion parameter model, which is saved in the Liu Haoxian repository on the Hugging Face website. And I've used the get model name from path function which is linked to the Hugging Face um, website and protocol to summon the actual name and the path of that specific model to save it locally on my machine and download it. And I'm just showing here the name of the model to make sure that I have downloaded the right model for my case. You can download the 7 billion parameter model depending on your GPU. The next part in this step is, is actually important the images. I have downloaded a number of random images from Google Images and I've stored them uh, in the pictures uh, folder on the root user uh, folder on, on Linux. And then I've created two arrays, one for the images and one for file names. I'm storing all of them file names into that array and I'm storing all of the images into that array, the actual image it, uh, images themselves. And here I'm just having a for loop which loops into the root folder or that folder and I'm basically appending all of the file names in here in the file names as you can see here and I'm appending the actual images in, in this images array. The last part of this step is importing the tokenizer from this large language model. So I've imported the tokenizer from the loaded model which is the lava version 1.5 13 billion parameter model and i have enabled the 4-bit quantization to enable using that large language model on my consumer grade gpu and the end result of that step is as you could see here so as you could see on the screen this is the image that i have chosen just a random image i've stated that i want the third image that is stored in the images array and I have imported it here and it's called cyclist in a race. Having imported the image above, I'm trying to create a function that takes the image as an input and outputs a PyTorch tensor that it is understood by Lava large language model. So I've named the function process image and it takes the image of choice as an input, taking into account the aspect ratio of that image, and then using process underscore images function from the Lava Torch library, it allows the conversion into a PyTorch tensor. And I'm specifying here the device, which is CUDA, because I'm using the GPU, and I'm specifying here as well floating point 16 for precision to high to have high, higher precision. Uh, and then I'm putting that function into practice here, where I am putting uh, a specific image that I've chosen, which is that one for the cyclists, into the actual function that I've created. And then I'm asking to give me the torch tensor that is produced from that image. And that is the output that I'm highlighting here. Having imported the model, and process the images, here comes an interesting part, which is created a function that converts the prompt that we input in the inference process into a format that is understood by the large language model. So in here, I'm defining what conversational mode that I'm gonna be using. In my case, I'm using Llama version zero. I think there's another version one, but I haven't tried it. And then I'm defining a function which takes the prompt as a string, and then it makes use of the chosen conversational mode, which is Lava version zero, and imports basically that conversational mode from prefabricated templates on the Hugging Face website for that specific large language model, which is the Lava version 1.5. And I'm inputting here and importing the rules within uh, that template. The rules basically are a user who's inputting a prompt and the AI assistant, which is processing the prompt and giving answers. And here is the prompt template that I'm basically choosing. So there's gonna be an input, 
which is basically the image where it's going to be tokenized and then beneath it by a line there's going to be the actual prompt and here i'm defining the rules the first rule is going to be for the user who's going to be giving the prompt and here the second rule is going to be for the ai assistant who's going to be processing the prompt and giving an answer and here i am putting that function into practice so i said that okay if i'm giving you an image then describe this image and that is here, as you can see here in the output, that is how that prompt is translated or converted into a format that is understood by a large language model. So a chat between a curious human and an artificial intelligence assistant, the assistant gives helpful, detailed and polite answers to the human's questions. So there's here an image which is provided by the human, followed by the query or the prompt, describe the image, and the assistant is going to be providing answers. Hooray! We have imported whatever libraries we want and are required and we have imported the required model. And now it's time to create an overarching function that will allow us to interact with the model, give an image, give a prompt and receive an answer. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm defining a function, I call it ask image, where I'm providing an image in the format of an image and a prompt in a format of a string variable. The image is going to be processed using the function that we have created above to give torch tensors. The prompt is going to be processed using the create prompt function that we created before to give the prompt that is understandable by the large language model. And I am identifying as well the input IDs for the whole process where we're going to be having tokenized image, taking into account the prompt, the tokens, and that the output tensors are going to be in the format of PyTorch tensors. And the device that is going to be used is the CUDA GPU. These two lines, they were defaulted from Lava documentation. They speak about some sort of stopping criteria for the strings and the likes. I think they rely on the conversational template so they're going to be different from one conversational template to another there are different sequences for the stopping criteria that are going to be applicable in different cases and then last but not the least i'm defining how the inference process is going to be happening so i'm defining that the input ids are those ones that i've used above the images or the image that we're going to be inputting is basically the extracted image tensor which is here the processed image and then the temperature which which defines the level of creativity of the model that's not point oh one i don't want the model to be creative i just want straightforward answers without any sort of creativity and then the tokens define how how many characters they're going to be output from the from the model itself Again, the stopping criteria, that's going to be dependent on the conversational template that you use. And then here, I'm decoding the output so that it is in a human readable format. And here I'm putting the function into action. So I've chosen the image of the cyclists and I'm saying describe that image. And whatever text you're going to be provided to me, make the width 110. And here is the output. So it says that the image features a group of four men riding bicycles down the road, which is true. They're all wearing helmets. That is 100% true and appear to be enjoying their time together. Again, they were all laughing. So apparently they are enjoying their, their, their time together. The first man is riding a bicycle on the left side of the road, while the other three men are riding bicycles in a line on the right side of the road. I don't think that's 100% accurate, but it makes a little bit of sense. Uh, the group seems to be having a good time as they ride together, possibly participating in a group ride or a cycling event. I think that is 100% true because they appear to be wearing all of them, you know, all of them cycling gears. Um, as you can see, that is the that one. That person is segregated a little bit from the rest of the team. He's on the left a little bit, but I don't think he's on the left side of the, ro of the road. I've asked another question. Do these cyclists hear helmets? And it said, yes, these cyclists are wearing helmets for safety while riding their bikes. And if you could see here, I've calculated 
the inference time so here is seven and a half seconds because it was the first question asked for that image and here is it just took two seconds and that is quite fascinating on consumer grade pc i'm doing that in literally nine seconds per image the functionality of lava is not only limited to deciphering images and just describing images and the likes but it also extends to the optical character recognition or text recognition from images so as you can see here on the screen i have imported one of the images in the images list i defined at the beginning of the project and it's just a generic image from a construction contract that is saved as a jpeg file and as you can see here, it states some info about the effective date. It's a construction contract. Apparently it's a Malaysian construction contract. It states bits and pieces about the construction project itself, the services to be provided and the likes. So what I've done is that I have queried the image and asked, what is the title of the paper? And it answered that the title of that paper is construction contract. And it took about a second and that is true. So I said, okay, let's take it up a notch summarize the first paragraph and it did a very good job it said that the first paragraph is a construction contract that outlines the terms and conditions for a project it specifies the date of execution parties involved responsibilities of each party the contract includes details about the construction project such as the scope of works the payment schedule and the completion date i think it included more here in that answer than in the actual paragraph. I think the part which is related to details about the construction project, scope of works and payment schedule, that's a little bit of a hallucination from the model. Because here in that first paragraph, it said that the execution date has to be defined, which is true, that was stated in the answer. And who are the parties, contractor and the client, but no more. All what was explained in today's video could be found in my guide about how to query images using lava which is existing within the online store on my website apcmasterypath.co.uk you can purchase it and have a look at the amount of details that is provided where you would find loads of sections and loads of steps that could take you by the hand to create your own chatbot and query your images using lava on my website, apcmasterypath.co.uk, I provide a wide variety of APC mentoring and teaching packages suiting the different needs of people, as well as APC self-helping tools, including a study progress tool to monitor your progress in study and to judge how ready you are regarding your APC submission. And last not the least, there is a wide variety of guidelines about how to deploy AI in the construction industry and one of them is what we have discussed today in this video. Thanks for watching.